We're unlocking the secrets of the universe here today on 80s Movie Tunes, so keep it tuned right here. This is 80s Movie Tunes, and I'm your host, Dr. Zirkus, astrophysicist, extraterrestrialist, and ufologist. <laughs> Just kidding, that last one is made up. But I am a wild speculationist, and I'll be sharing some of my keener insights with you later in the show, so stay tuned. I'm Dr. Zirkus, and you're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. Thanks for joining us today. Don't touch that dial. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes with me, your host, Dr. Zirkus. Stay tuned. This is Dr. Zirkus, and you're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. Keep it tuned right here. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Zirkus, sharing some groundbreaking new theories on air with you today. We'd be turning the world on its head if people would only listen. But you're here and you're sort of listening, and that's good enough for me. So stay tuned. Sure, the Hubble and Webb take nice pictures, and gravitational lensing is a great trick for a birthday party, but we're talking postcards. Imagine if you could actually go there. But sorry, no funding. You're listening to 80s movie tunes. Now let's get back to the music. We're talking crop circles this hour. Obviously a hoax, but a hoax on who and by whom? Is it the government playing tricks on the rednecks? Or is it the rednecks playing jokes on the government? Or maybe it's a little of both. You tell me. Either way, you guys are embarrassing us in front of the aliens. They're probably watching, you know, and you're making us look like a bunch of goofs. This is Dr. Zirkus, and you're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. Thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Dr. Zirkus. We've been talking about aliens. And as we've established, if aliens are out there, they'd obviously be trying to reach us telepathically. But we're still living in the Dark Ages. You admit to anything unusual, your professional credibility is finished. Now, I'm not saying just because you hear voices, it's probably aliens. You might just be crazy. That can go either way, which is precisely why we need to build a proper telescope. It's really too bad people consider all this fringe science and don't take it seriously. Oh, well, at least nobody's getting burned at the stake. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes, and it's time for another question from our listeners. Thanks for the great show, Dr. Zirkus. Your theories are far out, but I'm worried about the aliens. Stephen Hawking said, if they're anything like we are, they'll probably rule over us with an iron fist or something. Ah, yes, the good Dr. Hawking. You could never meet a more paranoid maniac. Although he does have a point. If they're anything like us, that's exactly what they'd do. But if they're anything like us, I very much doubt they'd survive their own mutually assured destruction. They'll either have intelligent people in charge, or they'll have snuffed themselves out by now. In other words, don't worry. They'll probably be really nice. Thanks for the question. Now let's hear another song. First of all, just to set the record straight, no, I've never been probed, to the best of my recollection. But more generally, where does that question even come from? It's like the human mind's worst fantasy. They lay you down on their operating table and what? Something sensible, like take tissue and bone samples, remove your skull? No. Probing. Probing is a purely human obsession. We got stores, whole aisles and display cases full of products dedicated to the endeavor. That's on us. That's not the aliens being weird. If they wanted to reach out, they'd be doing it telepathically. Although if that's what's on your mind, I can see why they don't. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes, and it's time for another question from our listeners. Thanks, Dr. Z. Your theories about aliens are really interesting. But you know what Richard Feynman said? UFOs come from the irrational efforts of terrestrial intelligence, not the rational efforts of extraterrestrial intelligence. 
Yes, well, it sounds like he's either overestimating terrestrial rationality or underestimating extraterrestrial irrationality. And either way, he should know better. But all that talk about UFOs is beside the point. The key to space travel and intergalactic communication is locked inside the human mind. We'll be talking more about that next hour. For now, let's get back to the music. This is 80s Movie Tunes, and we're extending a warm congratulations to our friends over at the Aeronautics Museum. Another giant leap forward for somebody's career, and one more extremely tiny step closer to wherever it is you think you're going. You haven't even made it past the driveway yet. You know that, right? And the nearest town is like a couple hundred thousand years from here. It's all well and good looking to the stars. They're very pretty. But if you ever actually do get anywhere, and we all hope you do, they'll only look at you like you're idiots and ask you why you didn't just set up a broadband connection. We need to be focused on amplifying the central nervous system. Get your comms working. You read me? This is Dr. Zirkus. Over and out. Hello again, my fellow listeners. Here we have another missive from the outer world. Hi, Dr. Zirkus. Love your show. One quick question for you. How is it you know so much about aliens? Have you ever met one? And did you ever get probed? Did I ever get probed? What kind of... You mean like... But why would... <sighs> Never mind. No more questions. Thanks for joining us. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. Dr. Zirkus with you here today. As most of our regular listeners know, I hold a degree in astrophysics, but my primary focus is interdimensional mental projection. You see, you can't use physical energy to travel the stars. They're just too far away. You've got to go there with your mind. And I don't mean metaphorically, like in your mind you can ride a unicorn. I mean geographically, like you're there for real, for all intents and purposes. It's like what they used to call astral projection, but without all the mumbo jumbo. It's all science. The human mind, you see, produces an extremely powerful analog signal, but obviously at extremely low amplitude. Otherwise, it would blow you apart. But if we amplify and filter the signal properly, well, let's just say the sky would no longer be the limit. You're listening to 80s Movie Tunes. Now it's time for another song. 